Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we will be taking a quick look and quick test at the SEMA or SIMA X8HG. Uh, if you can see up here, the X8HG. Quite a big box here. And now this will be an unboxing quick test, and this one was sent in for review by Gearbest. Now this is a pretty interesting model because um, they had big success off the X8C and X8G, which um, had the camera, and then this one has the HD camera that comes with it, not sort of like a GoPro style camera, um, but this one, the H models, they have um, altitude hold incorporated into them. So let's take this out. So we have a manual. Get the quad out. Very big to fit in this box. Pretty good that they fit everything in here. Oh, look at the bottom of this thing. There is just stuff packed all over. So let's take it out. Alright, here we are, and I just pulled a ton of stuff out of the back of that box, so let's just sort through what we have here. So here is the quad. No, that's the um, prop. So it comes with four landing legs here. Um, they're just plastic, and they just looks like they plug in and then have two screws, so four landing legs. And then you get eight props, so a full set and then a full set of spares. And they look to me like uh, maybe 11 inch props, 10 inch, maybe 10 inch, and they do have sort of a metal style hub in the middle here with a hex in the bottom can't really see it but i believe they might screw on i don't think they're self-tightening though so there we have those yep eight pops here we have this little box which is yep a charger okay so here we have the charger. It's just, you know, pretty much a standard wall charger, except it uses the European outlet. So make sure you leave a message when you, if you buy it, um, that you need the American adapter, and hopefully they'll get that out to you. And if not, they're pretty easy to find and really cheap. And this end goes to a barrel connector, and that is because this thing also came out of the box here. This is a little charger. It says, uh, uh, I don't know the output on it but this just plugs into here and then you plug the 2s balance port into here and it looks like it yeah that's not a fan that's just uh cooling holes and this charger says the output is 800 milliamps so here we have our remote and now this is actually quite a large remote um you can see it's very nice and white and red it's got long sticks for a pinch or a thumb flyer. It's pretty big, actually, almost just it's like the same size, if not bigger, as my Tyrannus. Um, the sticks, you can see, soft centering because of the altitude hold function. You know, so we'll see how that works. However, on a camera quad like this, a big one that is more acceptable than I'd say on something like a Cherson CX-10D. There's no pre no reason for altitude hold on here. Maybe it might have a function on here. Okay, so let's see. We just got some shoulder buttons. They feel pretty nice, actually, nice and tactile. And then we got switches and a little LCD screen down below. Here we have a bag that looks like this is a uh, card reader. It's interesting, this little orange thing. This end is with the card going, and this end is USB. Never seen one that looks quite like that. And then also, we have a, a matching orange screwdriver there. And we have four prop spinners, it looks like, little nuts. So I guess these do have to screw on like that. They're not self-locking. And then here we have the uh, a bag of screws for the landing legs, the um, prop guards, you know, everything that needs screwed on. And then here are the prop guards, so, you know, four big ones. I don't see how much these are going to... They're pretty, pretty strong, I would say, but I don't know how much these are going to do on a large aerial quad like this or how much they would, you know, I don't really think they're worth it. Okay, so here now we have the camera, and this came in its own separate little bag, so let me get that out. We almost threw away the cable, that would not be good. So here we have the camera, and now it looks sort of like a GoPro, um, maybe just a tad bit smaller, because um, I have a, a SJ Cam SJ5000X, and it looks almost exactly the same in size. Um, the lens is nice and clear. And it looks like this case isn't waterproof, it's just sort of a little thing on here. So let me see if 
I can take this case off. So that goes like that, and then the camera just slots right out. And from what I know, this is very light because this does not have its own internal battery, which is kind of disappointing because, you know, if you're not flying, you could take this off and then use it as a recording camera for something else. But no, you have to, uh, I believe, yep, uh, where was it? Over here, you have to plug this in, and then this plugs into the quad. So you have to power it off of the quad's battery. So it's kind of disappointing, but you are saving a little bit of weight. And then over here we have, let's see, a switch between 720p and 1080. Can't get it with my fingers here, but you have a little switch there. Um, and I don't, I believe it's 1080-30. And we have a micro SD card, so let's get that out. And we have a four gigabyte card, so that's a little bit small for 1080 video um, on this. And from what I've seen, the quality is pretty good. I believe it's maybe eight megapixels. So I would like to see an eight gigabyte card, but you know, it's only a few cents more, but you know, that's what it comes with, so let's put it back in this little holder here, so very simple for that. Then here we have the battery, which is a, let's see, what is it, a 2S, so 7.4 volt, 2000 milliamp hour battery. Here's your little JST uh, balanced connector here, so a 2S, and then you have 14 gauge wire leading to, um, I don't know, these are uh, maybe 1.5 millimeter bullet connectors. I'll have to look up, uh, it's not It's not EC3, It's those are all blue, EC5 or bigger, maybe, it's an EC, it might be an EC2, but just in red. I don't know, I'll have to look it up. It'll probably be over the screen. Then lastly, we take a look at the Behemoth Quad right here. So this thing is pretty big, and I'm very impressed that they fit all of this into that box. That was pretty cool how they did packaging so well. Uh, other other manufacturers or whoever did that, they need to do more like that because that saves on shipping and it's just a great thing that they had it so compact. So looking at the quad here, the plastic actually feels pretty decent. Um, you know, not great, but you know, for what you get, I really like the red color. It's really shiny, really gleamy. And looks like we have some, probably we have and def definitely, uh, let's look in the copy, the Phantom, DJI Phantom look. Up here we have some silver stripes on the arms, nothing in the back. And these arrows will probably light up. And there's no props on, obviously. And from what I've seen, these little slits, these little black things here, pull out. And then the prop guards slide in. So it's nice that they have these little protectors. Underneath we have, um, let me just take the battery bay open. So it's a little thing there. And then we take this out. So let me slide this in here. And let's plug it in. So that just plugs in like that. And then you have, you have plenty of room in there to shove the cables back in. So here's where the uh, camera plugs in. You can see it says plug right there, hopefully. And then we have an on switch. So let's see. It looks like we have red and um, red and green LEDs, and I do think the red are in the front, unfortu uh, unfortunately, and the green are in the back. And then you can see they do shine through those arrows. However, they are pretty bright, and they are visible from the sides and the top because of these. Not so much from the top. The arrows are f small, but um, definitely they seem like pretty good LEDs to me right off the bat here. Um, so other than that, everything looks really good so far. I'm excited to try this out. I believe it's about a um, $130 price range for this one. Um, pretty much same like the Zyma uh, X8G, and now this is the HG with the height hold, the altitude with the barometer, and then the camera should just slide, slide in here somehow. Yeah, it just slides in like that, and then you'll probably either you'll have to put your camera in the other way or you'll flip the footage, but it looks like you just put the camera in the correct way. And then there's a little button here that you press to get it off, and the camera comes right back on. So now, after all that rambling and the looks like nine minute video right there, let's take it outside, see how it performs for a quick little test before I get around to doing the full review. Let's go check it out. I'm just adding this quick little clip in, guys, because I was going to put the props on before I show you the flight of this, and I uh, ran into a little bit of problems because it's a little bit trickier than I thought. So first of all, we have this little weird thing here. So in this peg across, if you twist this white thing, it'll come out of that spot. So you have to pull this little peg out, 
and don't lose that little thing and I don't think they give you extras you pull this off and then you get your prop and now you have to see um, which prop you're gonna need um, you can see it says B on the thing here and then you can um, look at B on the prop or you can there's also a little arrow you can match the rotation up so you're gonna put the prop down over the shaft there and just move it till it fits all the way down in then you're gonna put this little white thing back on there and then get that little tiny pin that I don't think they give you any extras of and slot that through the hole again and then twist the white thing back so it locks in the middle and now your prop is on so that's what that looks like and then take one of your caps and just stick it on and give it a couple twists to make sure it's all the way down and now you have your prop on okay here we are outside with the Sima X8HG got everything set up here props on, camera on, landing feet on so let's just turn the remote on here and get those beeps. Let's turn the quad on. Let's just set it over here. And now we should go down, up, down, or up, then down. And now these are brushed motors, definitely not brushed, brushless. They are brushed, so they need to be broken in. Um, so I'm just going to let the motors run for a few minutes here before we start. So I should just put them in there. And I'm just going to let them run at very low throttle to help break in the brushes. All right, here we are back in, so it's been a few minutes, so just real quick, I'm going to see if I can, uh, should be able to press up to take a picture, and I saw the light flash down to start a video, and the lights on the quad, as well as camera flashing, so that's working well. So, now that we have the motors broken in, and I've read up on the manual, on all, everything, how to do this and such, let's start off, motors in, and let's try and take off here. So there we go, drifting just a little bit, and I haven't touched throttle yet since I took off, and now it is quite a bit loud, however, I'm actually quite surprised for the uh, motors and gearing how quiet it is, so it looks like we're going to need some trim. I did not calibrate the accelerometer, and we are in low rates flying here. So let's just test out the altitude hold. I'll just try and keep it in position here. You can see the altitude hold is actually working. Oh, going down a little. Oh, come back up. So it's working within a foot or two, I'd say, within two feet of height. Moving a little bit now. So within two or three feet of height. So pretty good, I'd say, for a toy toy uh, function. This is full speed flying in low rates here. You can see that. Let's check out the yaw. This is the full yaw and low rate. Not bad for a camera bird. You obviously want to go slower about like that if you're panning around. So let's uh, left bumper. Now we're in high rate. So let's see what we have now. Oh wow. Holy crap. For a camera platform, look at this thing go almost as fast as a phantom <laughs> that's actually very sporty and the barometer is working Let, let's try I won't do any throttle adjustment here let's see I'm, I'm not touching the throttle I'm just flying with yaw pitch and roll so I'm keeping the throttle mid stick and you can see I have not crashed yet <laughs> so it's pretty much having to give throttle that's actually the barometer on this thing is working very well So let's come back. Let's try a flip. So we should hold this button, or yeah, probably have to hold it. Yep, oh, there we go. Actually flips quite nicely. I'm not gonna do any more, well, I'll do one more, a little bit lower here. You can see, I, before the, I want the motors to break in a little bit more. So let's go up a little, actually let's come right here and let's take a picture. I got a little low. Gotta get the height. It's going down a little bit, so hopefully there's a picture. And then let's start some video. So 
quad selfie here. As some people like to call it a droney, which I do not, but uh, you know, whatever. Floats your goat. So we should be taking video. I see the lights flashing. So let's see what we got up there. And there probably is some jello in these brush geared stock props. So I'm not going too high right now. But I probably try and balance these before I try and take some actual footage with it. And it's getting a little windy up there. Let's go forward. Not too loud actually. And um, oh, oh, oh boy. That is what I was just going to talk about. Oh, 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 boy. The um, disarming and arming procedure is both sticks into the middle. And it said you can have to arm, you can put a stick up to the top for a few seconds and it will start. And to disarm, you can have the stick down to the bottom for a few seconds. And I was trying to come down right there, and that is exactly what happened. It dropped out of the sky. But ho luckily, it landed straight down, and it looks like it auto-rotated just a little bit. So I don't know if this shaft is bent, or it's just a prop, but everything looks like it might be okay. Let's try and stick the camera back on. That ejected. Um, still have power there. Oh, I hate things that do that. It should be a, a switch or a, a stick command, not just down. Okay, so let's arm here. Okay. It's drifting forward and it definitely sounds like I have sustained maybe a little bit of shaft or prop damage. So, yeah. Hopefully I, have that. I should have that on camera. I was filming. So that's disappointing, um, and really on something this big and expensive. I mean, it's 150 bucks, so pretty expensive. Like, it's great value, but I mean, compared to like a $20 toy one, I think there really should be a little bit nicer transmitter. Um, really, just with an arming switch. I mean, you can see I just demonstrated probably one of the biggest flaws of this thing. All right, so altitude hold. You can see it's actually going down a little bit now. I might have messed it up, but it's drifting. I did not recalibrate it. So let's come in and end this flight for a landing here. And then if I just hold my throttle down, you can see there it just stops. So yeah, it looks like this prop might be a little damaged. I'll have to check it out in more in depth later. But hopefully I got some camera footage and that was up on screen. So there we go. That was the unboxing and quick test of the Saima X8HG, which is the height hold or altitude hold version of the 8G, um, which has the 1080p HD camera included. Pretty nice so far. I really like it. Um, it's actually not that bad to fly, like kind of fun actually. It's pretty sporty. You might go, be going a little bit hard on these brushed motors though, which are so early on. Um, but, you know, like I said, that it just dropped there with that, whoops, see, I didn't even, you just flick it, look at that, that's, that's not acceptable for arming like that, that's, yeah, that's not good enough, there needs to be a switch or something more secure than that, but, you know, that's probably my biggest gripe right now, so I'll see if I can find anything else wrong with it, and I'll let you know in the review, so stay tuned if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next video, bye.